Praise God. Can I tell you, church, it's coming soon. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's coming soon. I, I was I was thinking just the other day, I, you know, I, I realized we're in 2014. Mm-hmm. And I've read several commentaries and of, of things happening and several several things, you know, about the end time and some of those that, that, that study about things that are going on and, and, and happenings uh, put <laughs> emphasis around the time that we're living in now. Well, and I, I, you know, I, and I, I got to say, you know, God, you could come anytime. Mm-hmm. You could come anytime. And yes, what, what a joy that would be Amen. to those that are ready. Amen. Right? And you realize there's still some that haven't made up their mind. There's still some that are not, not ready to meet you, Lord. So I believe that God is about to give us revival as we've never seen it before. Amen. Yeah. Pour His Spirit out as we've never seen it before. And I want to be a part of that. And as we need to make ourselves ready to meet Him when that trumpet sounds. Good to each one in the house of God on this beautiful day that God has given us Amen. to worship Him. Amen. John's Gospel, the first chapter, beginning at the 40th verse. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah which is being interpreted to Christ. Mm. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. And now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. And Philip findeth Nathanael, saith unto him, We found him of whom Moses is in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith unto him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no God. And Nathanael said unto him, Which knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said unto him, Before thy, that Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, Believest thou, thou shalt see greater things than these. Praise God. Let's praise you one more time. God, we love you. God, we praise you. We thank you for your word today. Anoint us and use us for thy glory. And our hearts and ears to receive your word. And we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. And you may be seated. Very familiar scriptures that we're reading here in John, the first chapter, when Jesus began to teach and after that he had been to John and had come to John and John when John the Baptist had saw him told him and had spoken the words behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world and and, uh, some began to follow after Jesus at that time and they began to believe him and the Bible said that one of the two which heard John speak or had heard John say behold the Lamb of God and followed him was Andrew Simon's Peter brother and then, then uh, he first finds his own brother Simon and, and he told him, said we found the Messiah which is interpreted to Christ and, and he brought him to Jesus and Jesus uh, changed his name to Cephas a stone and the day following when, when Jesus would go for them to Galilee he finds Philip. He tells Philip follow me. Well Philip was of Bethsaida, Bas- Bas- the city of Andrew and David. And Philip finds Nathaniel. Now, I want you to understand, you see how this is working? One finds Jesus and he goes tell another, you know, look, I, f- I found the Christ. Mm-hmm. I found the Christ. Uh, you know, and, and he finds Philip who says unto him, we found uh, uh, him whom Moses wrote about in the law. We found 
Christ Jesus of Nazareth. And Nathaniel first question said, can there any good thing come out of uh, Nazareth? And Philip answered, he said, well, come and see. Come and see. And that, mm. that's the, the title of my message this morning, simply come and see. Amen. Come and see. He went, on, he went on to tell him after, after Nathaniel came and saw Jesus, and Jesus said, I saw you when you was under, uh, under the fig tree. And uh, Nathaniel thought that he was excited about that and thought that was a great thing. And he said, well, if you believe, you'll see greater things than these. So simply, uh, we have to come and see to see greater things. Amen. But you understand what I'm saying? We have to come and see to see greater things. We need, in other words, we need to get excited about living for Jesus. You know, sometimes we get so complacent. Bless the Lord. We, we, we get so routine about our serving God that somewhere along the line, if we're not careful, we lose our excitement. Amen. You know, we, we forget to tell people, come and see what God has done in my life or come and see this man that I found or come and see this Jesus. So you know, we, we could uh, be a little more excited if, if my witness is dull or boring, then it's not going to touch too many lives. But if I can get excited about serving Jesus, if I can get excited about, they said, come, we, we, we found him, we found the price. You know, it should be that way, not only. Uh, to the new converts, but it also should still be that way to the old converts to get excited enough to tell somebody, why don't you come see this man that I found? Right. Come on and see, I found the Christ to get that excited. Come and see. We'll never know about the things of Jesus until we come and see for ourselves. We can speculate on it and we can go by what others tell us, but we need to come and see for ourselves uh, about this man called Jesus. Amen. Praise God. You begin to look in the Word of God again and, and go to familiar scriptures in John the fourth chapter and uh, starting at the tenth verse, this is where Jesus comes to the woman at the well. Jesus answered and, and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that says to thee, give me to drink, I would have asked of him, and he would have given you living water. Amen. The woman couldn't understand, and she said, uh, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep, from whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water, Thou shalt thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. Amen. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Now this woman had come to the well to draw water, and Jesus had met her there on purpose. Mm -hmm. He met her there on purpose. Because he said, I must, you know, I must need to go through Samaria. He knew that woman was coming. Yes, sir. But she had to come and see for herself. Now, he began to talk about a water. A living water. Amen. And if we begin to look, we find that living water that, that he was talking about was the Spirit of God. If you go and read in, in John, the seventh chapter, in verse 37, the Bible begins to tell us in the last day, that great day of the feast, that Jesus stood and cried, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. He spake of the Holy Ghost. That living water that Jesus spake of to the woman, he was speaking of the Spirit, or he was speaking of the Holy Ghost. See, we, we've come, uh, sometimes we come and we see God move and we see the Holy Ghost move, but we, we sit there time after time without never making a move for ourselves. But I want to send out an invitation to you this morning oh, that you come and experience this, right. and you come and you see this for yourself. Right. I can explain all day long to you how good it feels. 
yoke. I can explain all day long to you how exciting it is to know this Jesus that I know, to be filled with His Spirit, but until you come and see for yourself and come and experience for yourself, you'll never know the Amen. fullness of what God has for you. Amen. Praise God. This woman was excited as Jesus began to talk to her and tell her about this living water. And the woman said, Sir, give me this water. Give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And go and call, Jesus said unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband, for thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said thou truly. And the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Amen. See, she came and saw for herself. She said, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Then you drop down to verse 25, and the woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Amen. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am, am he. Upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman. Yet no man said, what, what seekest thou, or why talkest with thou with her? Then the woman left her water pot, and went her way into the city, and say to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that I ever did, is not this the Christ. Amen. What I'm trying to say this morning, is we ought to get so excited about Jesus, we forget about the things that we've got to do the rest of the day. We forget about the things. We forget about nothing but Jesus that we'll just leave a water pot or what Amen. we were going to do where it's at right. and get on with business with Jesus. My Lord, and understand that He's ready. That She got so excited she left that water pot. Yes, sir. She forgot what she went to the well for. See, we get so caught up in life. We get so caught up in our in our business or our career sometimes if we're not careful, we, we forget to, about Jesus. But we need to get to the place that we, we sometimes get so excited about Jesus, we just leave our water Amen. pot. Amen, right? that's right. And go tell somebody about Jesus. Go yes. tell somebody. She, said she left her water pot and went, and went into the city and began to tell them about Jesus. Then they went out of the city and came to him. They began to come. They heard what she was saying. Mm -hmm. They began to come and see for themselves. <coughs> can I, can I, can we, let me put it that way, generate enough excitement about what God is doing for us in our lives, what God is doing for us here at the church, can we get excited enough about it that we, we want to run out and tell somebody, why don't you come see for yourself what God is doing in this place? Amen. Yes, sir. Verse 39. Many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified he told me all I, that, that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. And many more believed because of his own word. Uh -huh. See, if they never came out to see, bless him, Lord. There have been a lot of them that have been lost right? mm -hmm. because they never bothered to come see what this woman said about Jesus. Amen. They came, many more believed because of his own word and said unto the woman, Now we believe. When they came and saw for themselves, now we believe. Mm -hmm. Not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that he this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. He said we know for ourselves. And that that one of the points that I want to get to, I want you to know for yourself. Amen. I want you to know this Jesus for yourself. I want you to know this Holy Ghost experience for yourself. Yes. Yeah. I can explain it to you, and I can read it to you in the Word of God. But until you come 
and see for yourself. Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Till you taste it for yourself, praise God, you'll never know. You'll never know what it feels like. Praise Amen. God. Praise God. Amen. You know, simply, so, so, some of us simply need to get the thrill back in our life. Get the newness back in our life. Mm. Get the excitement back in our life. Mm. And live and forget Jesus. Until we know for ourselves we don't really understand. Until we know for ourselves. We need to come and know the thrill of being filled with the Holy Ghost. We need to experience, if you've never experienced, you need to experience how clean you feel when you repent and are baptized in His name when that water washes your sins away. You need to come and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Experience it for yourself. You see, look, look, look with me if you would in the book of 2 Kings. Another familiar story. Second Kings, and it came to pass when the word of the Lord would take up Elijah to heaven by a whirlwind. That Elijah went from with Elisha from Gilgal. And Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha saith unto him, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Now Elijah was about to be taken away. The sons of prophets, in verse 3, the sons of the prophets that were at Bethel came forth to Elijah and said unto him, Knowest thou that the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today? And he said, Yeah, I know it, but hold your peace. Elijah said unto him, to Elijah, Tarry here. I pray thee for the Lord and send me to Jericho. And he said, As the Lord liveth, as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they came to Jericho. Could I tell you the problem sometimes with us is that we leave Jesus before the blessing comes? Mm -hmm. Amen. We'll leave Jesus before the blessing comes. Elisha had determined in his heart, I don't care where you go, I'm going with you. Man, if we could say that about Jesus, we could determine in our heart about Jesus. I don't care where you lead me, Jesus. I don't care where you go, Jesus. I'm going with you. Amen. Elijah said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not. And Elijah said, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to leave you. So they came to Jericho. The sons of the prophets that were at Jericho came to Elijah and said, Don't you know? He said, No, it's not. The, the Lord will take away thy master from thy head today. And he, he said, I know it. Hold your peace. I know it. I know it. I tell you something else I know. I know God's about to come back and yes, that trumpet's sir. about to sound and I'm not going to go anywhere. I'm going to stay with Jesus. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I know it. Hold your peace. I know it. And Elijah said unto him, Terry, I pray thee here for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. And he said, As the Lord liveth and as thy soul liveth I will not leave thee and they too went on here's our problem some will never experience all that God has for them because they're not willing to go any further than they are right now Amen. maybe I ought to say that again I said some will never experience all that God has got for them because they are not willing to go any further than they are right now. Amen. That's right. You'll never experience the fullness of God. You'll never experience all the things that God has got for you if you're not willing to keep on going with Jesus. Amen. The Bible said, and they too went on. He already told him, he said, you go ahead, but I'm going with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going where you're going. Right. Listen, if we, want, if we
if we want to experience more of God, if we want to experience all the things that this Word has for us and God has for us, we're going to have to get up and go on from where we're at right now. And that Amen. includes me, to you, to you, to you, to Amen. you, to you. Every one of us sitting in here, if we're going to draw closer to God, we've got to go on further than we've been yes, already. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Some people are just not willing to do that. You know what they ask? Well, what's it going to cost me? What will I have to do? How inconvenient would it be? What will it change in my life if I go on with Jesus? We're going to have to get to a place that we don't worry about that. Mm -hmm. We just make up our mind, I'm going on with Jesus. They too went on. Fifty men of the sons of the prophets went and stood to view, view afar off, and they, they too stood by Jordan. Elijah took his mantle and wrapped it together and smote the waters and they were divided hither and thither so that they too went over on dry ground. Amen. I plan on going over with Jesus. I don't know about you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Jesus. And it came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elisha, see if he'd have dropped out at Bethel, if he'd have dropped out at Jericho, Mm -hmm. One of them other places that, that Elijah, ha Elijah had to go, he never would have got to this point. That's right. He never would have got to this point. It came to pass when they were going over that Elijah said unto Elijah, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elijah said, I pray thee, let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, sir. He never would have experienced that double portion mm -hmm. if he stayed back in Bethel. He never would have experienced that double portion if he had stayed at Jericho. Amen. He never would have experienced that double portion if he had stayed on the other side of Jordan. That's right. Church, it, it's sad, but it's true. Some of us will never experience the fullness of God because we're comfortable with where we're at. We're staying behind while, while Jesus goes on and the church goes on. And Elijah said, I want a double portion of that spirit be upon me. He said, Never that thou hast asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if thou see me. See, we've got to come and see. Mm -hmm. If thou see me. Praise God. If thou see me when I'm taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, he said, If you don't see me, mm -hmm. if not, if not, if you don't stay in there, if you don't hang in there, you'll never see it. Amen. But if not, it shall not be so. Not like this. And it came to pass as they still went on. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass. You got prayers you won't answer? You've got things you want to see happen that you've asked God for. And it came to pass as they still went on. Not lagging behind in Bethel. Not lagging behind in Jericho. Not lagging behind on the other side of Jordan. But as they still went on. As they still went on. And talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elijah saw it and he cried, My father, my father, 
the chariot of Israel and the horsemen thereof. And he saw him no more. And he took hold of his own clothes and rent them in two pieces. And he took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. I, I, could, I could stop here and I could preach a whole nother, another message. If the Lord, listen, <coughs> if the Lord tarries long enough one of these days, I'm not going to be around. That's right. Some, some of you out there, some of you younger ones maybe, have got to be willing to step up because there's mantles of anointing mm -hmm. that somebody needs to carry on. Amen. He took up the mantle of Elijah. See, you see what happened when, when, when Elijah walked by, Elijah plowed in the field, he took that mantle and he draped it across Elijah's shoulder. He felt something. He knew something was there. That's when he began following after Elijah. He said, I want a double portion of that spirit that is upon you. Praise God. Somebody, somebody's got to carry on. Somebody's got to take that mouth of anointing and carry on the gospel of Jesus. He took up also the mantle of Elijah that fell from him, went back and stood by the bank of Jordan. And he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they parted hither and thither, and Elisha went over. And when the sons of the prophets which were to view at Jericho saw him, they said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest on Elisha. And they came to meet him and bowed themselves to the ground before him. They said, The spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elijah. Mm -hmm. Church, I believe if we'll hang in there, Nathaniel thought it was an exciting thing that Jesus had saw him under the fig tree. Jesus said, If you'll believe, you'll see greater things than these. Amen. Church, I believe, if we'll just believe, we'll see greater things than these. Yes. Praise God. We need to stay with Jesus and stick with Jesus until He sees us through whatever it is we're going through and then stay with Him after that. Mm -hmm. Praise God. I, I know somebody has to carry on the work of those mountains of anointing that are flowing down. And I'll just tell you right now, I plan on being here till I hear that trumpet sound. Amen. Praise God. I plan on being here until I hear that trumpet sound. One of these days I'm going to leave here and the church is going to leave here. Amen. Don't you lag behind to the place that when that trumpet sounds, you're left behind. Amen. you got to go on with Jesus. That's right. you got to go on with Jesus. No matter what the cost, no matter what decisions you'll have to make, no matter what things you'll have to change in your life, you need to go on with Jesus. Mm -hmm. All the way, you're going to experience everything that God has got for you is to come and see for yourself. Mm -hmm. Come and see for yourself. Let's all stand.